Hey, what's up, guys? So, uh, just today, one of my coworkers uh, presented me with a circuit challenge. And uh, he's still in school right now, so this was a, a, a problem uh, on one of his assignments or quizzes or something like that. But uh, he threw this up on the whiteboard and asked me to calculate the voltage at this point. Okay, so it's not an overly complex circuit. I mean, you just have a DC voltage source, a DC current source, and a couple resistors. Uh, there's no inductors, capacitors, or transistors, you know, really nothing too complicated here. So um, I went ahead and calculated the voltage there, and <laughs> I was wrong the first time, and I'll actually show you where I screwed up in my calculations at first, but then I did uh, uh, fix that and, and was able to find the correct voltage there. So in this video, I'll walk you through how uh, a circuit analysis like this would work, and uh, as well as show you the simulation of this so you can check your work and look at all the individual uh, currents and voltages uh, throughout the circuit. So we'll break it all down, work through it. So if you're uh, in school, you might find this useful. Um, if you already know how to calculate this, I challenge you as well to go off and see if you can find the correct uh, voltage at this point. So it could be kind of fun. So anyway, uh, go ahead, grab a beer, and uh, let's get started. So uh, the first thing I would do uh, when I look at a circuit like this is we need to define the current direction for each of the resistors just so everything works out. So, you know, we've got the 10 volt DC source over here. We've got the 2 amp DC source over here. Obviously, this is going that way. Uh, we'll consider the current through this resistor to be that way. Uh, the current through this resistor like that and the current through here like this and the current through there like that. So so that just kind of sets it all up for us. Now if the current calculated for any of these resistors is negative then we can flip it to be a positive current and then just change the, the direction there, the arrow direction. Uh, and by the way if you can't read my handwriting like I said we've got a 10 volt source, 2 amp DC current source 1 ohm, 5 ohm, 2 ohm, 10 ohm, okay? And the reason we're setting up these uh, current directions is because we're going to assume, you know, that uh, the voltage across these, uh, these resistors uh, is from a higher voltage source to a lower voltage source. So I'll get to that in a second here. So, uh, but just looking at these currents here, you, you can see that the current through this 5 ohm resistor must be equal to the current uh, through this resistor plus the current through this resistor. So I mean that's one of our formulas right there, or one of our equations, right? And we're gonna have to solve some equations. There's gonna be some algebra involved here, but it's nothing too complicated. So anyway, uh, that's one of our equations we're going to set up here. And then right here is another one, a very simple one. We've got two amps uh, going right through here. Uh, which then must equal the current through this resistor plus the current through this resistor here. So, um, so if we actually go ahead and set these up, let's call this voltage here though VO, okay? Uh, because we're going to need to use that's the voltage we're trying to calculate, and we'll also need a voltage name up here. So we could call this like I don't know VC for like V current. You know, it's the it's where the current source is, so we'll call that VC. So VO, VC. Uh, instead of you know la labeling everything with a with a designator R1, R2, A, or three, we'll just use the values. So anyway, let's go ahead and set up one of these uh, equations. So we can go. We've got uh, 10 volts right there, and we've got VO right there. So we know that the voltage drop across this resistor is going to be uh, 10 minus VO. And like I said, we're going from a high voltage to a low voltage with the current since it's going in this direction. So it will be 10 minus VO. And then Ohm's law to calculate the current through divided by the 1 ohm like that. Okay. And then we can add that to this current. So plus, uh, same kind of deal here. We're going to go VC minus VO uh, over the 2 ohms there. Okay, hopefully that's coming up on the camera there, okay? Yeah, kind of. And that is equal to the current through this resistor, which is uh, V 
O minus, well, zero, because everything is going to be referenced to this ground net here, okay? So that's just gonna be VO, we could put a minus zero, but it's pointless, right? Uh, divided by five ohms. Okay, so that's one of our equations. Now if we had VC here, if we knew what this voltage was, we could go ahead and calculate what VO is. But since we have no idea what VC is, uh, we're gonna have to set up another equation here. So we've got two variables in the system. All right, let me zoom out just a little bit there. Okay. So now our second equation is going to be uh, this current plus this current is equal to two amps. So we just do the same kind of deal here. VC minus VO divided by two ohms plus VC minus zero, but we'll just go over 10 ohms right here is equal to two, two amps. Okay, so that's that. those are our two equations. So now we have to do the algebra and set these things up. So what I'm gonna do is uh, calculate, set this one up, reconfigure this top equation here so that I have a VO equal to everything else with the VC part and then I'll plug that in to this equation here and then we'll calculate VC first and then from VC we'll calculate VO. Okay, so now uh, we gotta get into the algebra. So I'm gonna go ahead and we don't need to look at the circuit anymore because we, now we just have these two equations. So now I have to set that up. Okay, so solving for this first equation here, trying to find VO out of that, I basically took that equation and came down here and let me just get that a little bit on top there so it's a little bit easier to follow. So, you know, you can see here we've got the 10 minus VO over one, so the one just goes away. You've got the 10 minus VO plus the VC over two minus the VO over two. So I had to split that up because now I'm gonna be dealing with VO independent from VC uh, equal to VO over five. Obviously get rid of the, uh, the zero there, okay? Then the next step here is to rearrange the equation, get all the VOs uh, on one side Okay, you guys are gonna love the way I do algebra. Okay, so you can see I got the minus VO there. I've got the v minus VO over two there. I brought the VO over five to this side, and then I moved the 10 over here, moved the VC over two over here as well. Then I stripped the VO out. Okay, and then you're left with minus one, minus a half, minus a fifth. That equals minus 1.7. And then that equal to minus VC over two minus 10. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, so then we can move on to the second equation. Okay, then we've got pretty much the same uh, sort of deal here. And by the way, we could solve for different things and, and get to the answer uh, quicker, but you know, this is just, uh, uh, just kind of off the top of my head as we're working through this. So um, we've got, uh, we take the equation here, the second one, and this is actually, by the way, where I screwed up, okay? I didn't mention it before, but you know, it's very important that we define these current directions because what I, what I ended up doing when I first did it uh, was uh, I went VO minus VC in this second equation and it threw everything off, okay? So anyway, we'll take that second equation, break it up just like before. So now we've got the VC over two minus the VO over two plus VC over 10 is equal to two. Now I'm gonna solve for VO. So I separated things out, left VC over two here, left uh, VC over 10 there, brought the two over minus two, and then I moved the minus VO over two over to this side, okay? Then, uh, all I had to do then was just multiply the left side by two, get rid of the two on the denominator there, 
That canceled out the 2, turned the 1 over 10 into a 1 over 5. Um, then we had uh, multiplied the 2 by, by another 2 minus 4. Okay, so that's equal to VO. Uh, anyway, now we can take this, because now we have VO, and plug it into the first equation right here. So the reason I left out minus 1.7 over there is because I'm just going to multiply this entire thing by... Uh, negative 1.7 okay and then whatever that is left with will be on this side then we solve for VC okay so pretty straightforward stuff there let me go ahead and set that up okay so if you're still with me I went ahead and took the uh, the VO from the Last equation there, the VC plus VC over 5 minus 4 that we solved in the second equation, and plugged this back in for VO of the first equation right here. Okay, so it landed right there, so I multiplied everything by a minus 1.7. That was the first step right here. Uh, so minus VC 1.7 minus VC 1.7 over 5. I'll just pull that up right here so you can kind of follow along. And then uh, plus 6.8. So that's minus 4 times the uh, minus uh, 1.7. Okay, so that was the left side of that. And then on the right side of that first equation, we had the minus VC over 2 minus 10. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. This is combining both of those equations so that now we can solve for VC. Okay. So what I did next is bring every, all of the VC parts to the left side and then everything else to the right. So you can see we still have the minus VC 1.7 uh, minus the VC 1.7 over 5 right here. And then I brought the minus VC over 2 on this side and then moved the 6.8 over there. Okay. Then I pulled the VC out. Okay. So you can see that. And then we end up with our final equation here vc equal to this whole thing minus 6.8 minus 10 divided by minus 1.7 minus 1.7 over 5 plus a half and that gives us a vc voltage equal to 10.9 10.9 volts so going back to the circuit we have a voltage right here of 10.9 volts so what we can do now is go back to this equation, either one really, plug in 10.9 for VC and then solve for VO, okay? Uh, or it could be a whole lot easier than that because we just have to use Ohm's law. So if we calculate the current just through here, uh, well, that's pretty easy. You just go 10.9 divided by, well, 10 ohms, and you've got 1.09 amps going right there. And you know that You've got two amps going here, so you just go 2 minus 1.09, and you get 0.91 amps going this way, right? Then 0.91 amps, Ohm's law, times 2 right there gives you a voltage drop across this resistor here. Oops, sorry about that. A voltage drop across this resistor here of 1.8 2 volts okay and since we know the voltage here 10.9 uh, we know the drop will be 1.82 volts so if we go 10.9 minus that 1.82 you end up with a voltage right here of 9.08 volts there you go so that's how you solve something like that I mean and just kind of looking at it and again the only thing we had to really know is Ohm's law. And then obviously you need to understand current in equals current out, right? And how the relationship there. Um, so no, no fancy circuit analysis here or anything. So uh, that's how I worked it out. And now we can jump over to the simulation and prove that this is uh, correct here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so for this, we're just gonna use a simple online simulator here. And I've talked about this one in, uh, in some of my videos. This is uh, falstad.com uh, and I'll put the link to this in the description below, but this is a great simulator for testing simple circuits. 
So let's go ahead and create a blank circuit and I'll actually do this from scratch here. So we are gonna add a voltage source, okay? And we're gonna make that a 10 volt source. We'll add a resistor here. And I uh, actually gotta look at it while I'm doing this. Make sure I got it drawn right. Resistor there, resistor there, there. And we need another current source. There we go. Let's make sure we got the direction right. Yeah, we're good. Add a wire. Okay. Okay, that's good. And then let's add a ground to this as well. Okay, that's good. So now let's just set up these values. This one was a one ohm. Okay, that was a five. Cool. That's a two. And a 10, oops, 10. And this is a two amp. And now we want to add Let's see, I want to add an analog output to this point and this point. And then right click on those and show voltage. There we go. Show voltage. All right, moment of truth. Here we go. Let's hit the reset button and there we have it. 10 point, what did I have? 10.9 volts and 9.0 what did I put? 9.08? Let me go pull this up. Oh no, 9.09 .09 is what I had. Okay, so we're good, okay? We could celebrate, uh, take another hit off your beer, and uh, anyway, it's a simple circuit, so just kind of fun to, to work through these every once in a while, keep your mind fresh. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I was looking at this circuit and thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to actually build build this up on the bench and verify that everything works here and uh, so I actually scaled everything down so uh, I brought the uh, the current down to two milliamps and then multiplied all of the resistor values by a thousand so that I could use uh, resistors that I've got just lying around here um, so uh, I went ahead and built this up and you can see in the simulation the math still works out fine with those values this is still set to 10 volts here. And uh, I've got this built up here, and you can see I've got the 1K there. Uh, I've got the two 10Ks in parallel for the 5K, two 1Ks to set up the 2K, and then finally a 10K over here. And I've got the source measure unit uh, up and running, powering the two milliamp side. And uh, I've got the uh, the big uh, DC power supply out for the 10 volts. So that's set up right here for the two milliamp current source and then the 10 volts over here. Okay, and it'll be pretty easy to measure VC because I can just go to the source measure unit and measure, measure voltage. And you can see we've got uh, 10.89, which is pretty close to 10.91. Of course, I've got uh, 5% resistors here in the circuit and uh, I didn't even measure the 10 volt supply That's that's just what the meter is showing there. I could actually check that but anyway This is just to kind of get the gist of things here, but anyway uh, Now we can measure VO and I've got uh, The meter hooked up right at the VO point and looking at the benchtop meter there We can see VO is 9.1 volts so it works out pretty close to the 9.09 .09 that we saw in the simulation and in the calculations. So there you go. It's kind of a cool way to go all the way from you know, working it out on paper, taking it to simulation, and then to test here on the bench. So a little bit of a bonus there. Uh, thanks for watching.